What's up everybody, welcome back. So it's adventure week in Pokemon Go and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at two brand new Pokemon from the Kalos region, basically Aurorus and Tyrantrum. Now Aurorus is a rock ice type Pokemon whereas Tyrantrum is a rock dragon type Pokemon and obviously these two don't have the best typings, they have quite a few weaknesses in common which is why we're actually going to put them together and try it out in an ABB line featuring Gorgeist as the lead which is going to provide coverage against some of those water types, fighters and ground types which this backline would kind of struggle against. Now this isn't the best team comp out there, I mean it's not a team that I would recommend for climbing rank and I guess that goes without saying, but it's not the worst team as well, especially in the Remix Cup, it definitely has some sort of play, you definitely don't want to be using it in the Open Great League because Pokemon like Obstagoon and Scrafty can absolutely sweep this entire team, but in the Remix Cup, it definitely has some sort of play there. And also these are not the best IVs, I mean it's got pretty decent IVs but not the best PvP IVs because I did do a couple of trades to see if I could re-roll them, but uh, obviously today is the final opportunity that we have to try out these Pokemon. Pokemon in the Remix Cup, so might as well go with what we have, and there's some really fun battles in it, actually I didn't really cut out any losses, these were actually two full sets of battles that I did with this team, so we're going to show this team as such, and let's just get straight into it. Moving into the first battle here, we have Gorgeist into, into an Empoleon here, so they're actually starting off with a pretty decent lead here, and they are still staying in, and at this point they make a switch into the Raltaria, and this is where I realized that I accidentally went into the open Great League like an absolute noob. After talking about how terrible this team is, I go into the Great League, but we're going to try and come out of this. Luckily, we're, we have some favorable matchups here. Obviously, uh, Aurora has such a solid matchup against Altaria. And I'm going to let this go through here. Sky Attack is resisted. The reason I decided to throw right away is because I didn't want to take the Dragon Breath and what, what could potentially be a Dragon Pulse or a Moon Blast that could come in from the Altaria. But they come back with Empoleon. I'm going to try and land this Thunderbolt right now. And they get off a move. I'm going to shield this up. I mean, this is an Aurora's and Tyrantrum showcase. So might as well preserve the health on it. Going to go for the... Thunderbolt here, hoping it lands, but they shield that. So props to them, they probably were aware of the movesets of Aurorus there. But I'm going to come back with my Gorgeist. We have so much loaded energy going straight for the Shadow Ball here. And this will near one-shot the Empoleon from this range. And as it does that, it, they survive with like 1 HP. And they come in with their Mandibus. So this is perfect for, for me right now. I can come in with my Tyrantrum. And also I'm running Earthquake on Tyrantrum because I'm going to be using it as a save swap. And typically most people will not switch out Pokemon that are weak to rock. So I might as well have that Earthquake to provide coverage against Pokemon like Registeel and Melmetal, right? But anyways, this is not a uh, such a favorable matchup, especially without Stone Edge for the Tyrantrum because Mandibuzz is so tanky. And I'm going to shield up this foul play here, but luckily we get the debuff with Crunch. And these Dragon Tails are absolutely chunking, as you can see there. I'm going to go for another Crunch right now. Crunch will almost KO the Mandibuzz from this range. Actually, it doesn't quite take it out. They try to snipe with Empoleon, then they fail. And we're going to try and Dragon Tail down, and it ends up being a simultaneous KO there. So they're probably trying to farm down and then get off a move on the Gorgeist, but Gorgeist had a lot of energy and Gorgeist obviously wins CMP against Mandibus, so we would have won that anyways. Moving into the next one here, we have Gorgeist into a Polyrath. This is something that you definitely want to catch on the lead because the backline would really struggle against a Polyrath. I'm going to let this go through, hoping they don't have Ice Punch, but they do have Ice Punch, which is unfortunate. So we are going to stay in here, and this is going to be the second Ice Punch, and I'm going to start shielding right now. Obviously, Gorgeist does beat Polyrath, even if they have Ice Punch, we do beat them in even shielding scenarios. So going for the Seed Bomb right here, obviously doing super effective damage, should probably get the shield, and because we over farm quite a bit. I'm going to actually throw one extra Hex and then go for another Seed Bomb here. Let's see if they want to give up two shields in this matchup. And if they give up both shields, I'm actually going to mirror shields as well. I'm going to shield this up because, like I said, I do not want my backline to see a Polyrath here. And now they make a really nice catch onto their Kanto Nine Tails here. That's absolutely brilliant play on their part. But the good thing is we have Tyrantrum. Tyrantrum is an absolute wall to fire types because it double resists fire type moves because of that dragon rock typing. And as you can see, Weather Ball does almost nothing and we can completely farm down with Dragon Tail, right? Most Alolan Nine Tails is running the double fire moveset of Weather Ball and Overheat, which ends up working out perfectly for Tyrantrum because we're able to come out of this matchup with so much energy. And if Polyrath comes back in as it does there, we're going to be able to go straight for the Earthquake right now, doing massive damage against Polyrath and taking it out. And they have a Charmer in the back. Now this can be pretty tricky because Clefable is quite tanky and also Meteor Mash has the potential to one, one shot an Aurorus, right? Because Aurorus being double weak to steel because of that rock ice typing. But again, the good thing is Aurorus with Powder Snow and Weather Ball is going to be able to outpace Clefable here. So going to be able to get off the second Weather Ball right now and this is almost going to put take out this Clefable, puts it extremely low there and one extra Powder Snow is going to take it down. Even if they had gotten to a move, he still had a Gorgeist to clean up. So uh, yeah, that was a pretty... Good start to this one here. So moving into the next one here, we have Gorgeist into a Tropius. Now this is where the reality starts to kick in because we were actually 2-0 and in the set and I was like, yeah, we. Uh, I, I thought this team would probably end up working out better than what I originally thought it would. But 
honestly, like like you can see that this, yeah, I mean, they actually make a switcher that are in Golem, which is actually not terrible for uh, Tyrant, Tyrantrum, I should say. Uh, but I'm going to try and get to the second class. They, they were actually trying to farm up quite a bit of energy there, but Rollout honestly doesn't really do too much damage as a fast move, so we're able to get to the second crunch right now. And they're going to go for a move. I'm going to fully let this go through here. Uh, probably going to be a wild charge, but they actually decide to go for Stone Edge. They're probably running the double new move sets of Stone Edge and Wild Charge. So Stone Edge has... I mean, it, it, that's actually smart play on their part to actually go for Stone Edge because Stone Edge doesn't debuff them. But the good thing is, Gorgast is a pretty solid matchup against Alolan Golem, right? So going to be able to come back in, going for the Seed Bomb here, going to take out the um, Alolan Golem. They make a switch into their Tropius, and now they come in with their Mel Metal into my um, Auroras. Now, this is absolutely terrible. We're getting straight up hard countered right now. I needed to win switch advantage because this is an absolutely terrible matchup. I shield the first one because Superpower has the potential to one-shot because we are double weak to fighting because of the Ice Rock typing. But this is not looking good at all because this Mel Metal is absolutely loaded right now. And even though, as you can see, Thunderbolt did not, you know, that is about 50%. And at this point, I'm going to go for the Weather Ball to just chip away here. And my hope is to bring it down into farm down range so that I can farm up with my Gore Geist here, right? They're going to get to a move that is absolutely fine. I'm hoping that, you know, they don't switch out of this matchup because I really need that energy advantage on Gore Geist. But they, they're, they played really smartly there. They immediately switched into the Tropius. And this is looking very, very tough right now. And I'm going to go for Shadow Ball. Is Shadow Ball going to be enough to KO? It's not going to be enough. Tropius is unfortunately super bulky. And also, I mean, on top of the fact that the fact that they're running Air Slash and Air Relay's moveset, it's, it's going to make it very difficult, right? They're going to be able to farm down here. And yeah, we're going to take, uh, yeah, that's going to be the first defeat there. So very well played by them. I mean, I think, I think they played that game absolutely perfectly. But moving into the next one here, we have Gorgeist into a Ferrothorn right now. Now, Ferrothorn is obviously a, kind of a, tricky situation for the backline because it does pretty well against I mean it, it does really really well against uh, Aurorus uh, and does pretty well against Tyrantrum as well right because those dragon tails are resisted uh, Gorgeist is obviously my best response to a Ferrothan especially if they're not running any steel moves right as you can see both grass and electric moves are resisted in this matchup they probably should be going for power web because that's more energy efficient uh, they do go for power web right there and I'm gonna over farm quite a bit and then going for the seed bomb here I still need to preserve my Gorgeist just in case they have a mud boy in the back or something I need to still have that energy on Gorgeist so we're really gonna come in with my Tyrantrum and soak up this move here power whip is gonna do a lot of damage right now it's as you can see does about 60% of Tyrantrum's health and we bait out the Mel Metal there which is exactly what we want to see because we don't want the Auroras to go up against a Mel Metal again. Uh, Tyrantrum has a better matchup, obviously, against Mel Metal because you can at least hit for neutral with Crunch and Earthquake. I mean, you can hit for neutral with Auroras as well, but obviously Auroras is double weak to fighting and Superpower is obviously such a big threat, right? Unfortunately, I had to commit two shields there and I'm going to try and go for the Crunch shield bait right now, hoping we get the defense drop and I can get off another one. But unfortunately, they don't shield the first one and they also don't get the defense drop. So this is very unfortunate. I'm going to try and go for the second Crunch right now. Crunch does take out the Mel Metal and they have a Unova Stun Fisk in the back. This is where it can get very, very tricky, but luckily we have a lot of loaded energy on Gorgeist. So I'm going to go for the Seed Bomb here. This should get the shield and I'm going to stay in and wait for them to throw and really hoping that Auroras is going to be able to match up against Unova Stun Fisk. Obviously, we're going to be able to do super effective damage against each other, but then Stun Fisk is just so spammy, right? As you can see, they are slightly ahead on energy there, so which is going to make it very, very difficult. Mud Bomb does quite a bit of super effective damage and also there's, they're running Mud Shot, which is really adding up as well. And I'm going to try and build up to the back-to-back -back weather balls here. Uh, going to go for the first one. Actually, we're not quite at the back-to-back. -back. We're probably one powder snow short of the second one. I'm going to try and get to the second one. Unfortunately, they get to another mud bomb. And this is going to do super effective damage. And take out the Auroras there. So, I mean, if we had the slightest of energy leads, we probably could have pulled it off. But then, you know, with Stunfisk in the back is always a difficult Pokemon to go into. Moving into the final one of the first set of battles here, we have a Como O on the lead. Now, this can be very, very difficult again because these Dragon Tails will absolutely chunk the back line as well, especially against Tyrantrum. But I'm going to soak up a Dragon Claw and then go for the Shadow Ball right away to hopefully force a shield or do massive damage against this Como O here. It does get the shield. I'm going to come in with my Tyrantrum. And as you can see, we're taking as so much damage from Dragon Tail. We're also dealing quite a bit of damage as well, which is nice. And because we snuck an extra Dragon Tail through, I should be able to farm down here. But they make a switch into the Superior right now. And now I can just go for the Crunch. This is not the best matchup for, uh, for Tyrantrum because Superior is just so tanky. And then also these Grass moves are going to hurt quite a bit. I'm going to let this go through here. I'm just fully fine. I have to save a shield towards endgame. So I'm going to come in with my Auroras right now. 
And I'm gonna try and go for the power to snow, farm this thing down. I actually go straight for the weather ball on the CMP here because I'm, for, I'm gonna try and force them to shield as well. And they do shield that, which is perfect. And I was trying to catch a move and it ends up being a CMP as you can see there. And I'm gonna shield this up because obviously grass is super effective against Auroras. And I'm gonna farm up quite a bit. At this point, I realized my Auroras probably my win condition. I'm gonna try and catch on my Gorkeist. I probably could have thrown the uh, weather ball and taken out the uh, superior, but I'm hoping that whatever they have in the back is weak to Auroras here. But, they have a Registeel in the back of all things. I mean, that is the last thing I wanted to see, to be honest. I don't know why I thought they had something in the back which is weak to Auroras. I probably was better off preserving the Gorgeist because I should have just thrown the uh, Weather Ball immediately onto the Superior, right? Definitely a bit of a misplay on my part in hindsight. I mean, I didn't really know they had a Registeel in the back. I felt like energy on Auroras is going to help. But again, Focus Blast is probably going to take out like a whole flock of Auroras is there. Probably take out like 10 in total. I don't know. I mean, it's double super effective anyways. But yeah, that is the first set of battles. We It was a kind of a negative set, went two and three. Let's see if we can make it positive in the second one here. Moving into the first battle of the second set, we are met with a Dragalge there, not the best lead here. Immediately switching to the Tyrantrum, we were taking so much damage from Dragon Tail there. Luckily, we sneak an extra Dragon Tail through and we're gonna be able to do so much damage. Right, I'm gonna go for the Crunch and we deny their Dragon Tail, which is really crucial. Going for the Crunch right now, Crunch does get the shield from the Dragalge and then it ends up being a simultaneous KO. That is fantastic, that is absolutely perfect. And at this point, I'm hoping they bring out something that's good against gold guys so i'm gonna bring in with my auroras but they bring in an agron i mean like who uses agron in the great league remix right i mean i'm not saying it's a bad pokemon i just didn't want to run into it especially with my auroras but uh auroras i should say just uh, mixing up Almora and auroras but anyways uh, this is not the best situation to be in because this Agron is absolutely loaded right now. And I'm going to farm up as much as I can with Gorgeist. And then going for the Seed Bomb here, it is neutral and hopefully should get the shield from the Agron. And then I'm going for the second Seed Bomb. Unfortunately, we lose CMP. I'm really hoping we can survive this Heavy Slam. Uh, for, I don't know why they're throwing, they're probably not running Rock Tomb, but anyways... Going for the Seed Bomb here, Seed Bomb is going to put this Agron extremely low and now they make a switch into their Rainy Cast form. I'm going to come in with my Auroras, finally we get to land a Thunderbolt here. Now I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt, it's going to do super effective damage but doesn't one shot the Rainy Cast form there and they're able to get to a Weather Ball and that's going to take out the Auroras there. As you can see, even in slightly favorable matchups, Auroras is just not able to pull through and basically get us the win towards endgame which is why i mean obviously these are not the best pokemon to use and which is exactly why they're not very highly ranked on pv poke right moving into the next one here we have gorgeist into a galvantula right now a kind of a neutral lead i mean obviously i mean we have two pretty decent responses to galvantula so i'm actually going to soak it up here uh, and basically switch to clear the debuffs we have a shadow ball banked on the gorgeist which is important to note and they come in with their galade right now this is not the worst matchup for Tyrantrum, even though Galade is a fighter, they are running Confusion as the fast move. And also we managed to sneak an extra Dragon Tail through and get the defense debuff in the crunch, which is really amazing. Because I can just see shield the Leaf Blade here and they're not going to get to another one. We're going to be able to farm down and we have quite a bit of energy. And they come into their Empoleon, I'm going to go for the crunch. I was tempted to go for the Earthquake, but I knew I wouldn't get to it because we, we were getting pretty low anyways. And in, as you can see, I mean, Switch Advantage ended up becoming, uh, ended up being really crucial in this matchup because Aurora such as, uh, has nothing to do with an Empoleon, right? Uh, but I was trying to come in with my Gorgeist, unfortunately we face a ton of lag there, but I'm able to come back in, going for the Seed Bomb right now, it does get the shield from the Empoleon, trying to get to another Seed Bomb, they try to make a catch onto this uh, Galvantula, but we hold on to the energy, I'm going to come in with my Auroras, and I'm like, we can tank one move, right, I'm going to let this go through here, but they go for Energy Ball, I'm like, who runs Energy Ball, right, that near one shots the Auroras, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad move again, it's... It's actually pretty cool that Galvantula, I mean, it has the one-shot protection against Whiskash as well. But luckily, we have uh, loaded energy on Gorgeist, and also they're not at the two back-to-backs. And we have a shield anyways, and Shadow Ball is going to take out the Empoleon there. So, too close for comfort. That was definitely a little bit scary there, but uh, yeah, it was good that at least we were able to pull it off there. Moving into the next one here, we have Gorgeist into an Iraq when it right now. Kind of a neutral lead. I mean, I would say it's a slightly favorable lead as well. Honestly, this team, you definitely want to see some Iraq when it's because... Arachnid isn't too much of a threat for this team here. Bubble Beam is going to do neutral damage in this matchup, but I'm not too concerned about it. And they come in with their Prime Ape. So this is, again, exactly what you want to bait out. You don't want a Prime Ape hanging around in the back, especially with an Auroras. But uh, unfortunately, they, we, we get a shield, but we don't get the defense drop. But obviously coming in with my Gorgeist right now, and I have to shield this, right? Because Night Slash is going to do so much super effective damage. Uh, I'm going to have to preserve the health on Gorgeist here. I'm going to go for the Seed Bomb right now. And if they decide to no shield, I should be able to farm down with Hex here. Uh, they actually do let that go through, which is great. And I'm going to try and hex down. Unfortunately, they get to another move, which is completely fine by me. And I'm going to let this go through here. 
does quite a bit of damage actually and they have a charizard in the back so i'm gonna come in with my auroras right now and i'm gonna try and farm up as much as i can and this is actually not the worst matchup for auroras because we are part rock so we are uh, partially resisting uh, the rock type moves i mean it is neutral because of the ice rock typing but going for the weather ball shield bait right now it does get the shield and at this point i decided to blind throw the weather ball because i knew they were probably very close to a move and they make an amazing catch onto the galvanzo that was actually a big that was, that, that was a pretty dumb move on my part. I should have actually stra gone straight for the Thunderbolt there or at least preserve my energy. But uh, that was a very, very nice catch on their part there. I was trying to somehow preserve the health and try and switch into my Gorgeist. Unfortunately, we go down there. We were like very, very close to the switch time and coming back up. And if I had preserved the health and basically gotten off a Thunderbolt on Charizard, we might have had that. But that was basically my only win con there. But yeah, definitely misplayed that a little bit here. So we are one and two in the set right now. Let's see if we can win two uh, in a row and try and make the set positive because... I mean, got to do at least that much for all this hype here. Uh, moving into the next one here, they actually make a switch into their Meganium. I mean, Poly, a Polytoad is something you definitely want to see on the lead. It's a good thing we caught that on the lead. And even though we are taking super effective damage from the grass moves, Auroras is going to be able to significantly outpace Meganium, right? I mean, also these Powder Snows are really adding up as well. Going for the Weather Ball right now, going to be able to get to the second Weather Ball here. And this is, again, like I said, Either going to get the shield or take out the Meganium. It, they do let that go through, which is fantastic because we won back switch advantage. And they have a Smackdown Shadow Tyranitar here. That's a very, very cool, spicy pick. But going for the Weather Ball here, uh, and at this point, I can come in with my Tyrantrum, right? Uh, because I need to preserve the Gorgeist for the Polytoad in the back. And I'm going to shield this up because Crunch is going to do a lot of damage in this matchup. And now they make a switch into the Polytoad and they don't have enough energy for a Blizzard. I'm going for the Seed Bomb here. Again, this is a Shadow Polytoad. It's going to do so much damage against it. Uh, almost, I mean, does about 60% of Polytoad's health. And they are trying to build up to a Blizzard. They don't get to it in time. I'm able to get to another Seed Bomb and this game is over because, uh, yeah, there's no way uh, Tyranitar can farm down a go guys right so that was actually one of the interesting matchups it was tyrantrum versus tyranitar and i guess you can say tyrantrum came out on top uh but it was nice to see i guess moving into the final battle i can believe of the video we have a midnight farm lichen rock on the lead always a pretty cool pick i mean i absolutely love midnight farm lichen rock but it's actually a pretty favorable matchup it's a good thing we caught this on the lead because it's a counter user and you definitely don't want the back line to go up against it right uh, i'm going to shield this up in case it's a crunch but they bait with psychic fangs and now they make a switch into their Vigoroth. Now I have no sw choice but to stay in. This is also another counter user. And also Gorgeist is such a solid matchup against Vigoroth because everything in Vigoroth's moveset is either resisted or double resisted, right? And the good thing about being a Grass Ghost is that you're also going to resist Bulldoze, which is really nice. And I definitely cannot switch out into my Auroras or uh, my Tyrantrum against this Vigoroth here. So I'm going to stay in with my uh, Gorgeist and try and farm up and basically spam as many Seed Bombs as I can. Really need to get rid of this uh, uh, Vigoroth as soon as possible but they shield that and they're gonna get to another body slam here this is fine uh, this probably could be a bulldoze as well but expecting this to be a body slam which is double resisted and we face a bunch of lag here i'm gonna try and snipe with tyrantrum hopefully farm it down but they get to another move this is gonna be a body slam it is resisted by tyrantrum because of the rock typing and we should be able to farm down here and what let's see what they have in the back and they have their risk cash in the back now this is exactly why i needed to preserve the gorgeist looks like gorgeist had to pretty much carry this entire team but let's see what we can do with tyrantrum here unfortunately crunch doesn't get the debuff but as you can see these dragon tails are absolutely chunking and also this risk cash gets a bit greedy they try to farm down but i'm able to get to another crunch here and this crunch gets the defense drop they try to farm down but they're not able to we wasted a bunch of energy this risk cash easily had over 100 energy there and this game is pretty much over right now because yeah, I mean, Midnight Farm Lycan Rock had no health in the back there. So it was it would, it would have been interesting if they had decided to throw instead of farming all that much. But uh, anyways, like I mentioned, we finished with a 3-2 and two set, which is not all that bad for this team. Obviously, I did make a few mistakes here and there, but uh, definitely not the easiest team to use out there as well. So uh, looking forward to trying this team out in the Ultra League, hopefully with Trevenant in the lead. I feel like this team could be even better in the Ultra League, but stay tuned for that uh, in tomorrow's video, hopefully. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Do leave a like and subscribe uh, also if you want to, if you haven't already. It does help the channel. And uh, yeah, until next time, take care.